Berlin Brass is the flagship orchestral brass collection for the Berlin series. This comprehensive collection gives you every single player of an orchestral brass section, as well as selected ensembles. Equally importantly, it offers a highly detailed set of articulations and provides a full set of tools for adjusting and fine-tuning your compositions. And of course, the sound is rich, expressive, and detailed. In short, Berlin Brass gives you everything you need to write for brass at the highest quality level. This is the first of four videos. In this introduction, we'll look at the collection as a whole and dive into the instrument groups in later chapters. So what makes Berlin Brass special? Well, let's start with the instrument setup. We have the four horn players of the section recorded individually in their correct seating position. Here's the first one. The second. The third. And the fourth. And you also get the full section of all four horns playing together. The ensemble was recorded in a completely separate session. Over on the right side, we have the first trumpet. the second, and the third. And also a full section with all three trumpets, again, recorded together in separate sessions. The same goes for the trombones. Here we have a first tenor trombone, a second tenor trombone, and a bass trombone. And again, the ensemble of all three trombones. Finally, we have a solo bass tuba. This is the full lineup of the Berlin Brass main collection. It offers a standard orchestral setup of instruments. Orchestral Tools has other collections in their catalog for additional brass instruments and also muted brass. Having every individual player recorded separately is not standard practice in orchestral sample libraries. You might ask why we did this instead of having only one or two solo horns, for example. There are several advantages here. First of all, you really have four individual solo horns at your disposal. That means four different sounds and characters to work with. Secondly, and way more important, these four distinct horns free you up to do very detailed work and really program each individual voice of your horn section. Let me show you in this example. That was the four individual horns. Compare that to the same passage played by four instances of the same solo horn. It doesn't sound bad at all, but it's missing the richness and transparency that comes from the combined sound of the four individual players. We could also try to solve this with the horn ensemble on all four voices. Also not bad per se, but it doesn't sound like a section of four horns anymore. It sounds somehow overweight and flabby. So as you can hear, having those four individual horns adds an astonishing degree of realism. Here it is again for comparison. By the way, this is a good chance to give you a little glimpse of the huge dynamic range of Berlin brass. Here are those four horns performing the same passage very quietly.
And if you need an edge, those instruments can also get very loud and aggressive, especially when combined with the trombones and tuba. Okay, getting back to the approach of having the individual instruments. Another main advantage is the flexibility you get with your voicings. For example, you can build your own unison sections. In this example, we want the four horns to play this phrase in octaves, two horns on top, two on the bottom. No need to reach for a two horn section here. We can directly do this with our four individual players. We can also transpose the lower notes and have all horns perform the line in unison. Obviously, you might want to do this with the ensemble patches, but using the individual instruments gives you the flexibility to split the voices one by one, going from unison to a four-part voicing. The same approach can also be applied to a lyrical trumpet passage. Another note on the writing possibilities that these instruments offer. When the horns are playing the melody of cinematic music, you often need the ensemble in unison for that heroic sound we're so familiar with. With the trumpets, that's often not the case. Of course, there's something powerful about a full trumpet section all playing the same melody. But far more often, they play in harmony with each other, and with the full orchestra going on around them, you only really hear the top voice. In Berlin brass, you can achieve that with the help of the three different trumpets and their huge dynamic range. Let your lead trumpet play the melody as loud as needed and simply lower the two other voices a bit so they really only support the lead player, a common practice also used in live recording sessions. This example was performed with trumpet one on top, but don't feel confined to the numerical order. Maybe the second or third trumpet delivers a better top voice for your particular passage. For the following two examples, I just swapped the parts around without even touching the MIDI data. First, trumpet two on top with trumpet three on second and trumpet one on third voice. And now, trumpet three on top, trumpet one in the middle, and trumpet two on the low part. For Berlin brass, we recorded C trumpets on all three positions. We selected those for their beauty of tone and rich color. They may not be the first choice for the most forceful trumpet sound imaginable, but in this collection, we also push them to their limits to capture that highest possible dynamic. Just be aware that both the instrument and player of the C trumpet are aiming for that beautiful, noble trumpet tone. Here's an example on the range you can get with the trumpets. Another important concept of Berlin brass is attack control. For long notes, it's very important to have different options for the attack of the notes. You need softer attacks for pad-like, hymnic, or lyrical parts, and more pronounced attacks for fanfares or aggressive action phrases. In Berlin brass, we recorded the sustained notes with those different attacks. The standard sustains have that nice, pronounced, and defined attack on the note. The sustain's soft articulation gives you that very noble entry of the note.
then we have accented sustains. Okay, so let's talk about the next important feature of Berlin Brass, the adaptive legato. Orchestral Tools introduced this feature with the original Berlin series releases, and it's been developed further and further since then. The best thing about this feature is that while you're playing, you don't really have to think about it. It works under the hood of the sign player and glues the notes together with the appropriate legato mode. Basically, we recorded the transitions between notes at multiple speeds. So when you play fast, you hear fast transitions, and when you play slowly, you hear slow transitions. In Berlin Brass, we have three different kinds of legato transitions for the horns, trumpets, and tuba. Slurred, retongued, and a fast slurred runs transition. When you go ahead and just play the trumpet ensemble with the default legato articulation, you get a result like this. Here, the adaptive legato selects the slurred transitions for the slower notes, and switches to the faster runs transitions for the faster phrases. And while doing so, it constantly adjusts certain parameters of the legato transitions to provide a seamless performance. Here's another example with one of the solo horns. In this example, we had every note played with a slurred transition. This is most certainly not the way a brass player would perform a passage like that. Having only those slurs can make a phrase very undefined and blurry. Of course, you can help that by simply separating the notes that shouldn't slur into each other. And this is actually a viable approach. But with Berlin brass, we have a very different solution. Retongued transitions. By default, they are triggered by very high velocities, a bit like the portamento transitions in Berlin strings. So if you don't want those lyrical slurs we just heard, you can easily have the whole phrase performed with those retongued transitions. Simply raise the note velocity values. Then it sounds more natural, like this. It has quite a different character now, maybe more noble, less lyrical. But we can improve on that further still by combining both transition types. This gives us a result that's quite close to the interpretation of a live player. Okay, so, despite having all those options, legato is often not the most used or important playing style for the brass section. Especially in film music, we often use brass for the big moments to create excitement. And for that, you need a good selection of short note performances. In Berlin Brass, we essentially have four types of short notes. Staccatissimo, staccato, and short and long marcato. <laughs> In this little phrase, you heard all four of them. Across the different note lengths, it's important that they have consistent playing style, dynamic, and note attacks. So now, let's look at the microphone positions you get in this collection. Berlin Brass offers the same setup that Orchestral Tools uses in every Berlin series collection. In fact, it's the same setup used in every collection recorded on the Teldex scoring stage. Everything you've heard so far in this video was using just the Decatree mic positions. This is the main microphone channel that captures the whole recording stage. Here's what it sounds like. Above the Decca tree, we have a stereo AB pair of microphones, which have a more ambient and warmer sound compared to the Decca tree. We recommend you mix them to taste with the tree, but here they are on their own. For the rear speakers of your multi-channel setup, we have the surround microphones, another pair of microphones spaced widely apart and very high above the ground. Here they are on their own.
We use these three general mic positions for the whole orchestra. Now, let's get to the specific mic positions for the brass. To ensure flexibility and avoid any kinds of phasing issues with the spot microphones, Orchestral Tools decided to use a stereo pair for every section, available as a separate channel in the mixer. This adds some nice stereo detail. For example, if you listen to the spot mics of the horns, the first horn will sound very much from the right side and the fourth horn very much from the left, with the other two in between. The same goes for the trumpets and trombones. We only used single mono spots for the tuba. This approach gives you plenty of flexibility to narrow and shift the panning as needed to match the spots with the room mics, for example. Here's the first one. Okay, and now here's the second one. Here, the mics for the horns directly capture the sound from the bells behind the players. For the other instruments, it's a different kind of microphone, but in the same position as the first spot. We also recorded an ORTF pair for every section, which captures the very direct sound of the instruments with a distinct, detail-rich sound. These mics are delivered panned hard left and right. In the example you just heard, the panning was adjusted slightly in the sign mixer. This concludes the introduction and overview of Berlin Brass. Please make sure to check out the other videos of this screencast series for deep dives into all the individual instruments and sections.